Hello, this is Bino. Welcome back to my channel. What I wanted to do today was talk about why arborists trim the way they do. Not a how-to video, but just some of the do's and don'ts in trimming. All right, let's get to it. As an arborist, I would always want to trim a tree to make it look natural. In doing so, the tree responds by growing slower than it, it would be if you trimmed it really heavy. What I wanted to do is talk about thinning cuts. Now, in thinning cuts, I, I would remove all of the dying dead disease branches, um, branches that are crossing over and touching other branches. Also, uh, I'm going to remove um, anything that's cracked, maybe a risk. I'll look to remove the water sprouts that are in the tree. Now water sprouts, those are the ones that are growing straight up through the canopy and, and trying to take over. That's a water sprout. Also, um, I would have already taken suckers that are growing from the roots. That's something that I would have wanted to do. And I'm looking to have balance. I'll, I'll try to do it. Usually I would look at the whole tree and try to give balance to the tree and then individual branches as I'm working the tree. I want every branch to have balance. The next thing I wanted to do is talk about drop crotching. So as you look at the branch, the terminal end, the very end of the branch, that is the terminal end and there's a lot of energy at the end of that branch. Hormones are in those terminal tips. What drop crotching is, is where you reduce the length of a branch. So what you're gonna wanna do is you'll reduce it to a lateral branch. So when that hormone is released and energy is released into the tree, the lateral branch can take the energy. You'll do it by cutting back to a lateral that's either one third or one half the diameter of the one that you're removing. So what that does is it allows the energy to go to the lateral branch instead of being dispersed into the tree where you might get uh, overabundance of water sprouts or suckers in the tree. By drop crotching in that way, then the tree will grow a lot slower. The next thing I wanted to talk about is lion tailing. Um, and lion tailing is definitely not a proper pruning technique, but it's done all the time. What lion tailing is, you imagine the branch or the tree that you have, all the side branches are taken off all the way to the tips just like a lion's tail. You envision a lion's tail, well, the branches would look that way. So what happens when you do lion tailing is that all the end weight, that's what you have, end weight, and that branches have to hold that up. When a branch is balanced, it can, it can handle the weight. But if all the weight is on the tip, you get like a windstorm, that kind of thing, those branches get, get broken off. So lion tailing is definitely not a proper technique and it's something that shouldn't be done. The next thing I wanted to talk about were uh, topping cuts and heading cuts. Heading cut is, well, what a topping cut is where you just make a blunt cut, a cut. You don't take it to a lateral branch. Um, a lot of times you can see a top tree, pretty much all the leaves are taken off. Um, and it looks kind of like a hat rack. That's never proper pruning. That's just the worst thing you'd want to do to a tree um, because a tree really never recovers from that. Um, once a tree is topped, that damage stays in the tree, even if the tree were able to, to callus over. Um, callusing over is where the bark covers the, the wounded area. That's calloused over. Now a heading cut is to a lesser degree of a, a topping cut. It would be in the smaller branches, but it's in the same way. You'll cut to, um, you'll just stub it over. You might see a tree that's been rounded over. It still has green, but all the cuts are not to lateral branches or buds. It's just completely cut. So that's heading cuts. And both of those styles of trimming is not good for the tree. What it causes a tree to do, where I was talking about that um, the hormones that are released by um, drop crotching, well, heading does that in a big way. So the tree, if once you do the heading cut, the tree's energy has to go somewhere. 
it responds by putting out buds. Buds where you didn't have any buds, they could be on the trunk, on branches, they start popping out because the tree is trying to restore what it's lost. The leaves create the food and the tree is trying to make the leaves grow back quickly so it can have its food back. So um, in topping, also what happens is that the tree responds by sometimes putting out either fruit or nuts or seeds because it does feel like it's being um, attacked and some of the responses is try to re reproduce itself and by fruiting is another way that it reproduces if you have too much fruit then the branches get heavy also the branches that are left in those topping cuts when they grow from those points they're weakly attached they never fully are attached strongly um, also what can happen from those topping cuts you'll get those branches or the sprouts that come from them and they can grow 10 feet long with no side branches um, the tree is just shooting out it's not it wouldn't normally grow that way that growing pattern is is non-existent you just have like a long rod that shoots out that's what happens in topping and definitely it isn't a uh, proper method now that you guys know proper and improper ways of trimming a tree let's move to some examples of trimming in this video clip it was a canary island pine that was completely topped um, this is about four months afterwards you can see how thick the regrowth is um, because it was topped in that way it's just a mad rush of growth in this clip the Canary Island on the left hadn't been trimmed in seven years. And the new, the ones on the right, they were recently trimmed. You can see the one that hadn't been trimmed in seven years, it was still not too heavy. In this next clip here, this street of Canary Island pines, they hadn't been touched in four years. It's a four year cycle. So looking at these, the canopy of, the, of these canaries, you can see that they're pretty thin. Uh, especially after four years the trunks there's very little water sprouts and if you look up through the canopy um, there's not a lot of water sprouts growing through the branches um, they were trimmed properly in a natural way in this clip the coral tree had been headed back taking mostly all the foliage off and just making a line definitely not the best way to trim it's going to cause a, a reaction of growth in this clip there was an old topping cut when you uh, look in that area there's a dark area that was the old topping cut and what happened is the tree grew over it it appeared to be a solid branch but it wasn't it was a topping cut and it's always going to be weak pretty large branch um, that broke because of that old topping cut it was it was weakened so here is um, a picture of a coral tree that had been topped and it grew back. You can see how thick the canopy is. If, if it was trimmed in a natural way, it would be a little bit more open. It wouldn't be as thick. Here's a coral that was topped, uh, I'd say about seven or eight years ago. And since then, it's been um, worked on by trying to restore it. In that they take where the topping cuts are, they remove some larger branches and leave some smaller ones. Um, it's a little bit thinner than, than normal, but it's actually looking like a pretty decent looking tree, considering that it had been topped. Here's a jacaranda that was just completely topped. You can see all the topping cuts and some of the gro growth that's just starting to grow back. Um, over here on this um, other one, you can see that that was topped in the same way and I was thinking that it was about four months ago and then you could see all the water sprouts on the trunk how they're just scattered throughout the, the the main branches and you can see all the regrowth that you see the wind blowing on it that's a pretty thick sail um, and all those branches are going to be weakly attached so here's a jacaranda that um, you can see it those topping cuts on top those long straight shoots That's what happens when they're top they grow 
really long. They don't have structure to them. And at those attachment points, they're always going to be weakly attached. Something that can happen is uh, branches can fall in the wind. Now, this is a jacaranda here that's been trimmed properly through its lifetime. It's been about two years since this one was trimmed. And you can see there's very little sprouts. It's really open, looks natural, and it's a lot stronger than one that had been topped. So here's a parking lot of ficus and some carrot wood trees that were just recently topped. Um, they topped it during the summertime, um, right when you'd want to have shade for parked cars. Um, anyhow, they're, they're all topping cuts, so they're going to be weakly attached, and they're going to grow back quickly in, in mass. Um, not the best thing to do is top a tree and then have it in a parking lot where these weakly attached branches will have more of uh, chances to break and land on cars. Here's a ficus tree that um, hadn't been touched in seven years. So it's seven years without being trimmed. And as, walk, as I'm walking up here, you can look up through the canopy and it actually looks pretty thin. It's not very heavy. Um, it still has good structure. It's getting kind of wide, but it has been seven years without being trimmed. It's actually nice looking considering. So here's the ficus after trimming. Um, what they worked on is removing dead wood and some of the long ends and trying to make it look natural. Looks looks pretty good. Look up through the canopy, still looks um, what you want to have, a natural looking tree. In the video clips, you can definitely see that topping a tree is not the way to go. An arborist would definitely always want to trim in a natural way um, by making the proper cuts, um, check doing the best to give it balance. Uh, he knows that if you trim it in a proper way, you're going to hold up the value. It's going to be a safer tree um, and it, it'll last a lot longer for many years to come. Well, I hope you guys like that video. Comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you like what we do. And by all means, share our videos with your friends. All right, take care. We'll see you next time.